Good afternoon, I'm Taylor Richardson and you're watching The Source. Today we will cover the recent discussion of transgendered rights and targeted laws as well as a feature on the recent mass shooting in Kentucky and to pause students' opinions on gun control. On April 10, 2023, in Louisville, Kentucky, a mass shooting occurred at an old national bank and the mass shooting resulted in killing five people and injuring nine. The gunman was reported to be a 25-year-old man and had recent discussions with family and friends detailing his mental illness. The man was revealed he was suicidal, yet he was still able to purchase the weapon legally. In response to the tragedy, President Biden urged Congress to pass gun control measures. With the appearance of more and more mass shootings, DePaul students give their opinions on the gun control debate. First off, I just want to give my condolences to the families of the people who were killed. Uh, I hope that the other people who are injured, I hope they have a speedy recovery. Um, I, I hope that, you know, they just be able to get back to doing what they were doing in their daily lives. And it was just, it's very heartbreaking just to see, you know, what the world has come to when it comes to mass shootings and stuff like that. And how um, you see that we try to come together, you know, after a tragedy, but instead we should come together before a tragedy could even, you know, happen. And, uh, I just feel, you know, as a world, we just need to be able to view and, to see these tragedies and to be able to prevail and not let this be a step back um, in society. It breaks my heart to, to hear about another act of unnecessary violence. Um, as someone going into uh, a field that is more likely to be impacted by um, such unnecessary violence, it really um, it scares me. I think there's a lot of different emotions that play into that. Um, you know, it's 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 kind of terrible to say this, but at, at this point, it's almost like it's just another one, you know, and I feel like being, you know, no matter what community you're a part of and me being a part of like the Asian American community, when um, incidents like that happen, it's almost like to us, it just seems like it's just another one. Um, and so it's like, what what do we what do we do? Like what needs to happen? And it, and it's painful to see that. Um, it keeps happening and changes and occurring, so. In other news, the recent transgendered laws and debates have sparked media coverage throughout the United States. For transgendered Americans, 2022 till now has been filled with fear and uncertainty. More legislation has been filed to restrict the lives of trans people in 2023 more than any other point in the nation's history, trans youth being the most frequent target of lawmakers. Recent bills have been aimed at preventing trans girls and women from playing on female sports teams, laws barring trans youth from using bathrooms and locker rooms that align with their gender identity, and restrictions on gender-affirming medical care. We get to pause students' opinions on these recent events. The recent shooting in Tennessee was utterly tragic, and my heart goes out to everyone involved especially the friends and families of the victims. However, in the wake of this tragedy, I think the demonization of transgender people in response to the shooting is also horrific and unreasonable. Throughout my life, I've watched news stories after news stories come out about many, many shootings at schools across the country and felt less and less safe in my own schools. When the reasons given for past mass shootings have been important social media issues, such as bullying and mental illness, it brought greater awareness and support for people undergoing those issues. And schools shifted to talk more openly about advocating for bullied students, as well as getting students the mental health assistance they need. I'm frustrated that when the topic of transgenderism comes into the discussion, there is no support for transgender people. Just further ridicule and blame cast on our community. Why aren't we more willing to see the side of and feel bad for the people committing these acts of violence when they're cisgender? Transgenderism doesn't kill people. That's not the threat here. I encourage everyone being denied this vital care in our current system to build community. You are not alone. We will always fight for justice and for everyone in this country to have access to the care they rightfully deserve. Though things look bleak now, they've looked bleak before, and we will remain strong and come out the other side. There is a beautiful, vibrant community of people who will love and understand you as you are, and standing together will make us stronger as a whole. Um, I mean, I think that's just, that's clearly bogus. Mm -hmm. um, but there has been this big push to kind of legislate us out of public life, which is um, really problematic, yeah. to say the least. Um, because 
I don't know, all I can say is um, gender or, or not. What we're talking about on some level is social presentation, yeah. and we're talking about um, agency and individuals' rights to um, per, uh, express themselves mm -hmm. um, in a way that to them feels most authentic. Yeah. Now, if wearing a dress for me makes me feel like this is the most authentic expression of myself, yeah. I, as a human being, first and foremost, should have the right to do that. Yeah. And, Force and then as an American, yeah. I have the right yeah. to express myself any way I yeah. please. So, um, you can't take that away from me, and I won't sit back and let uh, politicians take my rights away. It's a very complicated one, um, especially because it is, to a degree, steeply baked into, uh, there's like a stigmatization that women are inherently like inferior at sports yeah. and physical um, ability, yeah. and that's just, hey, that's just shown to not be true. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there are certain metrics in terms of like, sure, there's muscle densities or yeah. whatever, but even then, we find that that's often baked into some re like racist rhetoric. If you actually do the yeah. research there, um, like if you look up bone density yeah. <laughs> um, and, and like women's sports, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, at the end of the day, um, I think that. This kind of leads into some other issues within the trans community. So yeah. I think whether or not hormone blockers um, are approved for children under the age of 18. Um, and then, because theoretically, if a child goes on puberty blockers and then is given the right to properly transition with the proper hormones, mm -hmm. there's no reason in my mind why that child shouldn't compete with the gender yeah. that they identify with. Um, now, that's not to say that I don't think there haven't been certain instances of people misusing this to their own advantage. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I say it's a complicated issue. I by no stretch believe that to be the majority or yeah. believe that to be so. I think first, first and foremost, I would like to see people participating in the sports to which they identify. Yeah. Um, and I think that the medical advancements that we've taken in this country will only help further that. We will now move into our weekly War Room seg segment with the PACS students and researcher, Jake Wood. Thanks, Taylor. First, we have an update on the normalization of relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran. As predicted during a previous iteration of this segment, the reopening of diplomatic relations between the two Middle Eastern countries has resulted in the possibility of a solution to the crisis in Yemen. Negotiations opened this week between the Houthi movement, which is backed by Iran, and the Yemeni government, which is backed by Saudi Arabia. The talks are being held in Sana'a, the nation's capital, which is currently occupied by the Houthi rebels. Saudi Arabia has also announced its intention to end its military intervention in the country, which has been criticized for human rights violations and exacerbating the crisis. If these negotiations are to be successful, Yemen's brutal civil war could come to a close. Next is a segment on the unrest in Northern Ireland. This has continued over the Easter weekend as Irish Republicans held parades to commemorate the 1916 Easter Rising, which brought about the creation of an independent Ireland. Northern Irish police reported on Sunday that they had foiled a plot by the New Irish Republican Army, or New IRA, to carry out a bomb attack in Derry ahead of U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to the region that occurred this week. As reported previously, the New IRA is part of the militant branch of Irish Republicans who opposed the 1998 Good Friday Agreement a treaty that ended the main conflict between Republicans and pro-British forces in the territory. Violence erupted on Monday, April 10th, during an Easter Rising parade led by anti-treaty Republican group Seru. As <laughs> attempted to shut the event down. Youths in the estate of Cregan threw firebombs at police vehicles, which prevented the march from being stopped. During a speech given at the event, Saru's leader encouraged the attendants to, quote, join the IRA. The following day, police claimed to have recovered four pipe bombs in the Cregan City Cemetery. During the recovery operation, Republican youths once again attacked the police. 
Unrest continues as anti-treaty Republicans attempt to create an atmosphere of insecurity to disrupt the idea that peace has been won in Northern Ireland. Finally, a group of around 130 U.S. congressmen have signed an open letter to the foreign policy chief of the European Union, urging the political grouping to designate the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, as a terrorist organization. The IRGC is an official branch of Iran's military, which is responsible, which is responsible for, quote, ensuring the integrity of the Islamic Republic. The IRGC is most notably active in foreign conflicts, such as the Syrian civil war, in which the Corps supports the Assad regime. In the letter, Congressman explained the threat the, that the IRGC poses to Europe and cited a report by the Combating Terrorism Center at West Point, which indicated that there were around 33 terror plots linked to the organization in Europe. The United States designated the IRGC as a terrorist group in 2019 in response to its involvement on attacks in U.S. forces in Syria. On other countries have yet to follow suit, but this initiative appears to be aimed at correcting that. Thank you for watching this week's source. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel at D3TV DePaw. Tune in next week to stay up to date on the real news.